All right. We are sitting here discussing did Dave Ramsey really say that whole life insurance and the infinite banking concept is a Ponzi scheme? And a part of that video that he did when he was breaking down different things, he said that Xander Insurance, one of the competitive term quoting services that Dave gets paid uh, millions of dollars in advertising fees from every year, says that if you go on their website and do an instant quote for life insurance, that of all the 42 options they will provide you, none of them will be a mutual life insurance company because none of the mutual life insurance companies are competitive, only stock life insurance companies are competitive. That may be true. I don't know. I've never actually been on this site. This is literally the first time I've ever been on the site. So JD, Ernie, and I are going to go through this together and figure out if that's the case. So all right, get an instant quote. We're going to go for life insurance here. Um, you know, it's interesting that they start out with 500,000 because that's not enough to do anything. I want to do 10 million. Why do I want to do 10 million, JD? Why would you want to do 10 million? Well, because you want to buy as much life insurance as you can possibly get. Why would you do that? Once, based upon Dave's examples, once you're 55 and you got 500,000 in a 401k and debt free, your, your wife is going to have to suffer um, the rest of their life, you know, trying to figure out a way to spend that 500,000, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> but if I, if, if I buy as much life insurance as, as the insurance company is, is willing to give me, um, that's, that's the thing that I think is often under, under, uh, discussed and talked about is it takes a tremendous amount of capital to create income, like a lot of capital to create income. Which, which this is, by the way, I feel like a real issue when it says Dave Ramsey recommends 10 to 12 times your annual salary to replace lost income for your family. Now I'm going to tell you, I am not nearly smart enough to tell you how much life insurance that you want for your family. Right. Because in order to determine what you're going to uh, get has to determine based upon how much you're going to leave to them once you're no longer here. Right. So in that example, 10 to 12 times that if I made one hundred thousand dollars and I bought a million dollars, that'd be 10 times. So then my wife gets to live the next 10 years exactly the same way as if I was here, except I'm not there to fix the dishwasher. Once from I'm not there to put the angel on top of the Christmas tree, and I'm not there to help put my son's Lego back together. All three things I did last night. If, if she needed help doing that, she'd have to pay somebody, right? So technically, she would need more money if I was not here than less, correct? And then that means she's got 10 years. she got a 10-year run rate. What happens after 10 years, J.D.? Uh, she's uh, she's got to uh, get back on the market and get remarried. She, she better be hitting Tinder up, right? I mean, she better be hitting... Uh, Bumble, Tinder. Four, 40s and over, right? I mean, she needs to start looking at the marketplace and, and hey, you know, we're going to put the kids to the side. We're going to put them with a babysitter. I got to get back out in the club. That's farmersonly.com, baby. Well, I, I just think that's the reason I'm saying this is stupid. I hate when people give a recommended number. I'm never going to give you how much insurance you should have. You're literally going to say, this is what I want for our family. And we're going to put it in a calculator and figure out what the, what, it, what you need to make that happen. And to be honest, for most people, the insurance company is going to say, we will not give you the amount of insurance you want. Because <laughs> the insurance company has limits. And people, most people don't know that because they've been listening to Dave all their life. So, all right, we're, we're going to keep going. I, I, I just felt like stopping there for a second. Dave recommends a 15 or 20 year level plan to lock in rates long term while you attack debt and saving. Because when you get older, there is no reason to have life insurance. True or false? Say that question again. When you get older, there's no reason to have life insurance. True or false? False. Why? Why do you need life insurance? Well because that life insurance is what gives me permission to spend all of my assets. Say that. I love what you're saying there. I understand what you're saying, but let's break it out a little bit. Peel that back a little bit for, for someone who may be hear, hear, hearing that for the first time. Yeah. So if, if I've got, say, a million dollars in assets and in, in investments, say in a 401k that I'm using for income for my wife and I, 
well, that million dollars has to, to, to be able to spend for both me and my wife. So when I die, she gets what's left over and vice versa. Well, if that's all I have, we have to spend that money very, very conservatively and very, very slowly. Well, if I have a million dollars, right, of life insurance, that gives me permission to spend that money however I want within reason so that when I die, it's fully replenished and replaced. So my wife has the exact same million dollars to spend to, to, as she survives me. So, sure. so having life insurance in place gives me permission to spend all the money we've spent stewarding and saving over the course of our working years. All right. So all the studies that have been done on term insurance tell you what percentage of term policies ever pay a death claim? Less than 2%. Less than 2%. Because most people outlive the 20-year term policy that they purchase, correct? That's right. So what you just said, based upon Dave's advice, is going to play out because they will not have insurance in place because any type of permanent life insurance policy is stupid based upon Dave's recommendation. Uh, that's correct. Okay. All right. We're going to keep going forward here. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, by the way, you guys, if you want to buy me a birthday present, um, please do. My birthday is March 17th. That is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, contrary to public belief, uh, I am male. Um, I know I'm wearing a pink shirt. I, I consider myself super healthy. Um, Use tobacco in the last 12 months? Nope. Um, my name is Russ Morgan. All right, my email address. Oh, man, we're going to get some quotes here. I'm going to give them, like everybody else does, their junk mail. Um, if you guys want to send something to Hotmail and never want me to see it, that'd be perfect. Uh, we're going to give them my office number so they can call and ask Tracy um, to talk to me in a second. Um, zip code, yep, show my quotes. Let's do this thing. All right, let's take a look at the list here, JD. Um, we got AIG at the top, man. AIG, stock or mutual company? Uh, stock. Hey, by the way, if someone um, has ever heard of a life insurance company that has had financial difficulty, what would be the name of that life insurance company? Uh, that would be AIG. <laughs> <That would be edgy. laughs> so Although, I think it may. I, yeah, I, I think that may have been their health insurance division. But either way, the AIG, yeah, they they went belly up. <laughs> so the fact that they're the cheapest one on here, I don't know if that gives you confidence in the company that you're buying. <laughs> but if based on Dave's advice, uh, you should look at this list with comfort. But e even here, I would say yeah. that the whole list is not the cheapest insurance, right? Because what percentage of term policies, again, uh, will ever pay a death claim? Uh, percentage that will pay is uh, less than 2%. Less than 2%. So then that means every single policy that you buy as a term policy, other than that 2%, uh, will never pay a death claim. That could be the most expensive policy you could buy. If you spend money for something and never get anything, that's got to be expensive. I, I don't know. I, you know, I bought a, a couple lottery tickets over my lifetime. I'd say those are pretty expensive tickets. Um <laughs> Lincoln. Stock. Uh, stock. We, we, we're just going to, we're going to rapid fire here. Protective. Stock. Pack Life. Stock. Banner Life. Stock. North American. Stock. SBLI. Mutual. What? Hold on. Dave said no mutual company is going to show up out of 42 on this list. No mutual company. Are you sure? No. SBLI is I'm 100%. A that, that, yeah, that's a, that's, a P, that's a P plus mutual company. <laughs> SBLI completes <laughs> conversion to mutual life insurance company. We believe that moving forward as a mutual company is in the best interest of SBLI <laughs> and its policyholders. That's uh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that's interesting. Prudential. Uh, stock. Hey, contrary to Dave's video, Prudential actually is a stock company and not a mutual company, right? That is affirmative, yes. Mutual of Omaha. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say mutual. <laughs> <laughs> what gave it away? I don't know. Some, something about the, the name, I think, the, uh, who they are. Just mutual gave it away to me, yeah. <laughs> a, 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 short, a short web search might also turn up and say, what type of insurance company are they? And it would tell you that they are a mutual company. Okay, that's two. That's two. All right. 
but hey, this is baseball. <laughs> Two strikes, you're not out, all right? All right, let's go down. Uh, next all right. One. A surety. Uh, yeah, that's another mutual. Are you a sure? I am a sure of that, yes. <laughs> Let, let's verify because this would make a three strikes you're out, Dave. What it means to be mutual <laughs> as a mutual organization. <laughs> We're owned by and accountable to the people we insure, meaning that our customers come first by design. At almost in fact, not only did it strike Dave out, but it also pointed out to the fact that stock companies are in business for who? Uh, uh, stock companies are in business for their shareholders, people who own their stock. Exactly. And we buy insurance. We would love to be a part of who they're in business for. And that would be mutual. So three strikes, you're out, Dave. Here is, again, we didn't go through 42. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So three out of 11 were mutual. So uh, just under 30%. It was close, Dave. Again, I know hand grenades and Dave's advice are always what's almost right, but not necessarily perfect. And here's another reason to not listen to Dave Ramsey when he talks about life insurance. If you want to listen to somebody on marketing, how to make tons of money in sponsorships, how to get amazing listenership and uh, downloads on your videos, Dave is your guy. He will swamp me every single day of the week when it comes to YouTube subscribers but financial advice is not necessarily Dave's forte, even though that's how he gets those YouTube subscribers. Thank you for watching. As always, the Wealth Without Wall Street investigative team go deep on Dave Ramsey today. Thanks, JD. <laughs> Thanks, Ernie. Yeah, thank you.